What if I told you that companies are literally waiting to hand you thousands of dollars for finding security issues in their assets? And I'm not talking about small change here. We're talking about 10 to $15,000 per vulnerability. And listen, I have been in this whole bug bounty game for long enough to know that making $100,000 a year is completely doable. And to be honest, I'm not here to sell you on some get rich quick scheme. I'm here to show you exactly the roadmap that I would personally take if I had to start with my first $100,000 all over again. And the thing with bug bounties is that every major company out there has a bug bounty program. Take your Meta, Google, Apple, TikTok. They all are willing to pay you serious money for finding these vulnerabilities. But here's the thing. In order for us to reach that 100K mark, we need to break it down into achievable milestones. First, we'll aim for $1,000, then make that $1,000 to $10,000, and then eventually scale up to $100,000. But before we dive into the video, I'm thinking about creating an exclusive 100K club on Discord where we can share tips, collaborate on findings, and help each other and keep each other accountable in order to hit our six-figure goal. So if you're interested, drop me a comment with 100K, and I'll send you a link to join. Let's start off with just picking the right targets first, because this is literally where most people tend to mess up. You need to find companies that need two critical criteria. One is a high payout and two, having a massive attack surface. I'm going to break down three examples of good programs to hack on, starting with Amazon, because for example, if you look at them, they're constantly pushing new code, sometimes multiple times a month. One day you look at amazon.com and next day they have added a new feature for prime members or they have rolled out a new service. Each deployment is a new opportunity. Plus, think about it. Amazon has hundreds of microservices. They have Prime, they have Seller Central, they have books, they have authors. Those are all gold mines of potential vulnerabilities. FIS is another massive program to go after because they're handling financial transactions for banks all around the world. The complexity of their systems means when you find a vulnerability, it's usually a good one and not to mention their scope is massive. You can also look at programs like T-Mobile, TikTok, Epic Games for similar reasons. These companies are constantly constantly evolving, pushing new features and maintaining huge attack surfaces that create the perfect opportunity for bug hunters. And here is something that most people don't know with these direct programs. They often have special invite only tiers. If you're consistently providing value and sending them good bugs and communicating professionally, you may get invited to a private program or even a special live hacking event. Now, here's something crucial you need to understand about being successful with any program that you choose to focus on. And this also ties in with a killer tweet from Run Raider Justin that says, pick a target with lots of depth and a communicative team then become the world expert on it. This right here, this is the secret sauce. You need to understand two critical things about your target. First, their business model. What makes them money? What would hurt them the most? If you're hunting on Meta, understand their ad system. For Apple, know their ecosystem. For Amazon, learn their seller networks. When you understand what's sensitive to them, you'll know exactly where to look for, for high impact bugs. Second, their tech stack. What frameworks do they use? How do they handle authentication? What's the deployment process like? The deeper you go, the more likely you are to find bugs that others miss. And here's something that sets top hunters apart. They don't just understand the current system. They follow every CVE and end date that comes out of their target's tech stack. When a new vulnerability drops in a framework your target uses, you should be the first one testing if they are affected. This is how you turn knowledge into real money. But don't just chase CVEs blindly, follow the right people, read the right content. And when someone drops a write-up about your target, don't just read it, understand it deeply. Ask yourself, what other futures might have the same issue? That's how you turn one bug into many. Now, before we dive into specific vulnerabilities, let's talk about picking your niche. This is where most bug bounty hunters get it wrong. They try to learn everything at once and end up mastering nothing. Here's what works. Focus on web and mobile security. That's where the money is and that's where most programs are. But don't just scatter your efforts across every platform. Pick one major target and become the expert on that specific program. Think about it. Security is massive. We've got Web3, client-side, server-side, mobile, desktop, but you don't need to master all of it. Pick one area and go deep. And I mean really deep. Learn their tech stack inside and out understand their business model, build a collection of relevant bug reports, join Discord communities that focus on your niche, and follow the right researchers. Reading other bug bounty hunters' methodology and bug write-ups is an optional, it's part of the job, Set time aside each week to study. Look at how other successful hunters approach your target. What techniques do they use? What patterns do you notice? This isn't about copying. It's just about building on what works. And don't get caught up trying to perfect your automation or tools. Learn just enough to be effective. 
then spend time on actually hunting. The real progress happens when you're actively testing, not when you're tweaking your tools for the hundredth time. Here's a strategy that actually works. Look for companies that run life hacking events. Pick one, become active on their program and make yourself known by building enough reputation. And you might even get invited to an exclusive event where the real money is. That's actually a tip that came from a tweet from Douglas Day, AKA Archangel. I wanted to know, hey, how do you make 100K? And this was his response and I couldn't agree anymore. If you're still not ready and you need to master specific vulnerabilities before you decide on a niche, let me break down some vulnerability types that I personally think you should focus on that consistently lead to high impact finding. Let's start it off with my favorite XSS, but not your basic alert XSS. I'm talking about chaining XSS with other functionalities or even open redirects to perform things like account takeovers. When you show a company how their XSS can lead to mass account compromise, then that's when those 10K bounties start rolling in. But let me tell you something even better, blind XSS. These are absolute gold because they often hit internal admin panels and support dashboards. Think about it. When a support agent views a ticket or an admin reviews a profile, your payload executes with their privileges. I've seen blind XSS findings that pay more than most critical vulnerabilities because companies take internal compromise very seriously. So drop your XSS payload everywhere, like your user profile, for submissions, your user agent, or even in error messages. The beautiful thing is that it might hit a few weeks or months later when someone internally finally reviews that data. And even if you get a hit, you're often looking at a security vulnerability that is going to give you access to internal systems. That's the kind of finding that can easily push you closer to that 100K goal. That was an example of a client-side vulnerability, but now we need to talk about a server-side vulnerability like SSRF. SSRF is such a fun vulnerability, especially in cloud environments. Companies are pushing everything to AWS, Azure, and GCP, and when you can demonstrate how your SSRF can access internal services or a metadata endpoint, you are looking at a massive payday. But here's what most hunters don't think about. SSRF goes beyond just hitting the cloud metadata endpoints. Modern companies are running complex internal infrastructures. Think about your Kubernetes clusters, Kafka message queues, internal APIs, and even the monitoring systems. If you can pivot your SSRF to reach these services, then you're looking at a potential infrastructure while impact. These kinds of findings show real business impact because you're proving access to their entire backend infrastructure. The key here is to understand what modern companies are running internally, learn about the common internal services, the default ports, the typical infrastructure setups. And when you find an SSRF, don't stop at the first internal service that you hit. Think about what else might be accessible from there. Authorization issues are also where there is a ton of money to be made, especially for SaaS platforms. But here is what most hunters miss. Don't just look for basic idols. Think bigger. Think about leaking sensitive information through the API endpoints. Can you access admin functionalities? Can you view other users' data? That's what the companies are about and that's what they care for. Here's a pro tip. When you find these issues, always test them on auth. Found an IDOR? Well, then let's try it and see if we can access them without being logged in. If you find some admin functionality working for a regular user, then test that without being logged in and see if you can get access to it because testing for things like this, take a simple functionality from an admin that may not have an impact into a massive payday because you were able to prove multiple vulnerabilities within a single functionality. This actually leads me to one of the most overlooked aspects of bug hunting, which is proper API testing, but that comes with learning how to fuzz them properly. Most hunters just spray random parameters, but smart fuzzing is about understanding the API infrastructure and finding patterns. When you find one vulnerability, look for it across all of their API endpoints. One of my favorite things to actually look for is 403 bypasses and the patterns that come with it. Most people that see a 403, they move on, but if you can bypass it and show how it leads to a massive data leak, that is an easy critical finding. And then you can take that pattern and apply it across all of the different applications that the company owns. And don't sleep on path reversals, especially when dealing with reverse proxies. Modern applications are complex and the complexity creates vulnerabilities. One executed patch reversal can actually expose an entire internal network and tooling. So keep that in mind. Even better if you learn how to use patch reversals when it comes down to client-side vulnerabilities, which is a whole different topic that I got to give a shout out to Justin, aka Ryan Raider, and their podcast. Before we wrap up, I want to just talk about something that most people overlook on their journey to making their first 100,000, and that's that every single dollar count. Listen, everyone dreams about landing that massive critical bug the reality is that consistent medium findings can also add up and it helps build momentum don't get caught up in only hunting for criticals if you can demonstrate real impact report it those five hundred and thousand dollar bounties 
they stack up. Some of my most successful months come from multiple medium and high findings rather than just one big hit. But here's the thing about reports. I love how Stoke explained this. They are your personal brand in the bug bounty world. Think of each report as your shop's window. You never know who's reading it or who they are connected to. I've seen hunters get private invites just because their reports were consistently professional and well written. Learn to communicate impact clearly, whether you're using CVSS or not, make your point easy to understand. And if a triager doesn't accept the impact right away, don't get frustrated or just argue with him. Work on explaining it better. Sometimes a well-explained medium bug can get escalated just because you communicated the impact clearly. And if a report gets undervalued and it gets paid differently than you expected, don't let it get to you. Stay professional. Bug bounty is a long game and your reputation is worth more than a single bounty. I have personally seen way too many bug bounty hunters burn bridges over a single downgraded report. And trust me, that's not how you get to $100,000. All right, what do you think? Are you ready to join the 100K club? Let me know down below and I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.